while I've got this instrument in, uh, this is a Musa M55, um, I'm going to talk about uh, what to look for if you want to buy one secondhand. As you'll have seen, if you looked at the uh, the other post, which he was talking about the repair, listen to the motor, switch the motor on, listen to it. Are there any noises or any dings? This has got a, a repetitive click, 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 click. That's, you know, um, could be a number of things, uh, which we won't go into in this video. Um, but first of all, it's a musical instrument, so play it. Listen to it. Yeah, do you like the sound of it? Switch the motor off, put the resonators quarter closed, so they're in sort of this 45 degree angle. Um, and listen to the tuning. So why that, I mean, listen to the octaves. Listen to whether they're actually tuned properly. You can hear on that one. Wow, 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 wow. You can hear the beating. That's because it's not tuned very well. To be honest, expect that. Um, but you know just get an understanding of the instrument that you're playing you know select a few a few octaves at random seem to be okay down at the bottom the f's not very good because the chords are uh, so tight that i can't actually put the springs in so do the f sharps they seem to be fine but the top f's Tuning it, tuning issues. So bear that in mind because you, you know, depending on how um, you want to, you know, how what use you want to put the instrument to, those tuning issues might actually be a real problem. If especially if you're doing quiet chords and things like that, you, you know, I don't want to hear that. Um, yeah, but uh, it is endemic in how vibraphones are not tuned. Play the instrument in, in bursts. Etc. Up the instrument. Make sure that everything's being damped off properly. Um, again, the felt that they use is not very good. Um, but we'll, t you know, that is dis will be discussed in another video. Now take the notes off the instrument. Uh, to do that, you have to sort of lift them off. If I can get the string off in like that, sort of in a forward motion, because these note pegs here have got like little C hooks in. If I zoom in here, you can see there's like a Z, a C hook to hold them in to stop them from raising. That's actually a really nice feature on uh, on the better makes of vibes. With the notes off. Switch the motor on. While we're down here, check this toggle switch is not broken because that's a delicate part. Make sure that it works through its speed. Listen for repetitive clicks like we've got down here. Look at the damper bar. This felt's rubbish. Uh, you should only change this anyway. Um, but look for missing parts like this here at the end. That creates a very vague mo movement. Again, this little hook here is suffers from wear. Check that out. Make sure that it actually stays in its little hook. And look at the motor. For the motor, I actually take the resonators out. We now know that there's a click on the resonators, but let's look to see whether the motor actually runs quietly. I'll take the resonators out and then I flip the instrument on its end so that you don't have to grovel it, or rather so that I don't have to grovel on the floor. Check the overall condition of the resonators while they're out and give the tubes a little wiggle. They should be stationary, fixed in. This one here has got a wiggle. That's going to cause a buzz. But the other resonators, and these ones especially at the low end, these tubes here, these always get dented in. But make sure they're just not mashed beyond recognition. With the instrument on its side, you can get access to the motor. 
make sure it doesn't move about like this one. This has been badly repaired as well. Um, you know, it's got screws in here, but it's not isolated properly. Look at the wiring as well. Make sure that there's no sort of loose wires. Check out the cable for, for cable breaks. And check out this motor bracket here. This should be tight. Again, this movement here, this is sort of, you know, badly assembled. Gaffer tape is always an indication that there are problems somewhere. So look at it. These things always come out, you know. Look, look at the movement there on that. That is always going to buzz. Look at the diagonal braces. Give them a wiggle. Look how ridiculously weak they are. They don't do anything. These are fit for the bin. You know, if you're buying a new instrument, don't ever, you don't even bother paying money for this sort of rubbish. Get it made professionally. Look again at this, this hook here when we're down here. Um, make sure that it's sort of, there's no wear. And look at the instrument from the end on. You know, stand with your foot on the bottom and just see if you can wiggle it. Look how much movement there is at that top end. There, you can see that sort of wiggling about. You know, this is an indication that these rails at the top are not done quite right. Finally, look at the damage that you get in here. You know, again, this is not really badly sort of worn out, but this is an indication of what goes wrong and the problems that these instruments have. Um, on the casters, you can see we've got these, the new style caster, which fits in, but... Um, that rattle there is always going to cause you problems. Uh, they need to, you know, something needs to be done about that. Um, but again, it doesn't really affect the second hand value. It shouldn't do. Uh, but it's just an indication of the sort of issues that you'd need to sort out if you're looking at buying one of these instruments. So I hope this helps. It's a good instrument. Um, you know, this one, I think I would class as being in reasonably good condition. So worthy of paying good money. Uh, of course, I've forgotten a few bits, so let me just um, go over some more bits that you need to really look at. Going back to the casters, on the older style instruments, the casters just push straight in. These also come out very easily. I'll see if I can get one out to show you. Here we go. You can see that the caster's held in by this, this foam rubber sleeve. Now, this part is actually uh, drilled out round. There you go, I've turned the light on so you can actually see it. So it will grip into that. On the older instruments, they went straight into the tube and this thing compressed a lot more. And what it happens is it deforms the tube um, a lot and the casters sort of fall out. But look how thin the aluminium tube is on the legs. This is a real issue. You know, the aluminium is very weak and these just aren't strong enough anyway. Um, but this is an inherent problem with the instrument rather than a buying guide issue. So uh, I won't dwell on that. Coming down to the pedal, look at this bar, the main pull rod. Make sure that it's nice and straight. Um, these often get bent in transit, especially at this joint here. So check this, give it a pull. You know, give it a wiggle around, make sure that it's nice and tight and it's not wearing out. The hole in there goes over. All you can see, I've done repairs like this on Deegan Vibes a lot because it's essentially the same uh, pedal configuration. Look at the main bracket here. Again, make sure that this isn't totally deformed. They do bend because they're not strong enough. Again, this is this is Musser building cheap. Um, you know, it's just a thin bit of metal, so it's going to deform out of shape. As standard, they come with the American 3-pin plug, um, so make sure you've got an adapter. I have replaced quite a lot of these Vibe motors because people burn them out by forcing these into UK plug sockets. You need a transformer, and there's the transformer in the background for this instrument. It's a huge block, but you can, in, can get in little plug-in adapters. They only draw about, you know, well, 3 amps is more than enough. The fuse is for 3 amps. So, you know, the transformer that you need to buy doesn't really need to be that strong. What I generally do is I fit the transformer onto the underside of the instrument so that it sits in here and then fit a normal flex to it, um, you know, for, trans for transit. With the instrument back on its, on its casters, uh, just have a look, make sure that the note play pegs, you know, are generally okay. Um, and look at this point here, check the handle, make sure it's got no damage in. They often get damaged here. These rods as well, are they bent up? Because they, again, they're so weak, they will flex out of shape. These are sort of indications that the instrument has had a big bang at this sort of on these outer edges. Um, and these are indications of structural problems, which really do matter when you're buying second hand.